We can't have chapel right now. The building is closed, the choir dispersed, like the rest of our community. The rounds and the actions which make up term time normality are not possible for us. But I thought it would still be good as chaplain if I could make available on a regular, perhaps even a weekly basis, a little something, perhaps a reading, a poem, a meditation, maybe a prayer. So that if you cannot come to chapel, a little something of chapel can come to you. And I recognize that we are a mixed community of different beliefs and different uncertainties. I am a Christian minister, and no apologies for that. And my most fundamental belief is that the world is made and held by an inexpressible love, a love that holds each one of us in an infinite, infinite regard. I believe that this world is a theater of glory, even if, for now, some of what plays out on its stage looks suspiciously like tragedy. I believe that love's infinite regard is still the truer and the deeper plot. And whatever you believe, I hope that something of what is said here is helpful and that in whatever life is throwing at you right now, be it boredom, stress, loneliness, loss, or maybe you're just even okay and this isn't so bad for you, but wherever you are and whatever you're feeling, I hope in some way that this helps. And I want to start off with a poem, and it may seem an odd one to some of you. It's by an American poet, Hayden Carruth, who died a few years back. And it's a poem that saw me through one of the bleaker times in my own life, a year of relative isolation, as I saw my mother through what would be some of the last months of her life. In order to look after her, I lived for a while in a cold and declining Midwestern American city, spending my time shuttling daily between a hospital and a small, lonely apartment, cut off by many miles from most of my friends and much of what I loved. This poem gave me hope because it reminded me in that cold city of better things. And it's called, of all things, Scrambled Eggs and Whiskey. Scrambled eggs and whiskey in the false dawn light. Chicago, a sweet town, bleak God knows, but sweet sometimes. And weren't we fine tonight? When Hank set up that limping treble roll behind me, my horn just growled, and I thought my heart would burst. And Brad pressing with the soft stick, and Joanne singing low. Here we are now in the White Tower, leaning on one another, too tired to go home. But don't say a word. Don't tell a soul. They wouldn't understand. They couldn't, never in a million years, how fine, how magnificent we were in that old club tonight. It's a poem about jazz and about friendship and about those fleeting moments of beauty and play which make this world, this theater of glory, something of what it can be. And jazz, as an art form, needs friendship. It needs other people. People who grow to trust and to work with one another, creating an interplay of improvisation. It's a musical form that needs camaraderie. And so why did a poem about jazz mean so much to me when camaraderie was what I most lacked? Well, because it reminded me that those things would come again. 
and even that they still existed, just as my friends were still there, even if miles away. And even in a bleak town, in my loneliness, if I listened, I could still hear echoes of glory, the thrum and the roll of multiple moments of beauty, the hidden jazz in so many lives, the echoes of what I most fundamentally believe to be true, that this is a world held and sustained by love. And remembering that helped me to keep sane in a time of my own fear and stress and isolation. I want to read something else, a short passage of scripture from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the thing that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. It may not feel like a time to rejoice, but this was not a letter written by Paul to a group of people who were having an easy time. And the advice, whatever you believe, is still good and still holds. In the darkness, remember the light. Remember all that is good and all that is beautiful in each day. Remember and hold fast to those rumors of glory, the signs of the deeper plot underneath any tragedy. That's not denial. That's just refusing to let the hard things control the script. And for those of us who believe in an undergirding love, this is simply holding to the deepest truth of the universe. So wherever you are, whatever your situation, until we can meet again, hold fast to what is good and beautiful and excellent. Listen for the jazz. Remember that the camaraderie is only in abeyance and it will come back. Don't deny what is hard. Some of the best jazz is born in adversity. But don't let what is hard be the final and the only story, because it isn't. And may you know in your deepest heart the peace of God, the peace of that love which still holds all things. Amen.